I'm impressed by people who are goal-directed, forward-looking and constructive. Put in other words, I'm impressed by people who like to solve complex problems. To me, they are the ones that put things into perspective, that fix things and that are the innovators of the future. But we need more of them, many more, and that's why my interest lies with understanding how do people become good problem solvers, what does it need to help them to facilitate their problem solving competencies, what challenges do people face and how can they be supported. And that's why I'm fully committed to research on complex problem solving. It is the year 1952 when the European Court of Justice is established. The Greek philosopher Aristotle said, law is reason free from passion. Courts of justice are places where problems are solved based on reasoning alone, not on the basis of force or who has the stronger muscle or who has the bigger gun but only on the basis of the rule of law and its reasons. Courts of justice are therefore the ultimate instrument to solve problems. The highest court in Europe is the European Court of Justice, established here in this building behind me in Luxembourg. Luxembourg also has an ambitious university and one of its research centers is focused on understanding the mental processes of complex problem solving. This research center is led by Dr. Samuel Greif, who will now introduce us to his most recent research insights. Let me start with a definition of what complex problem solving actually is. First of all, we talk about a problem when there is a given a given state, a given initial state, and a goal state. And there is a difference between the initial and the goal state, and in between them there is a barrier, and we don't know how to actually dissolve or overcome this barrier. Think, for instance, well, when you have a new technical device, could be a tablet, could be a smartphone, could be a new vending machine, and you don't really feel like working through the entire manual, then maybe you just, well, you face a complex problem and by trial and error, by systematically trying out how the technical device works, you try to actually come from the initial state to the goal state, which will enable you to work on the technical device. There are many more examples like this. You can think about your private life, you can think about work life, for instance, when new IT solutions are introduced or when a company is restructured. All of these situations, which we encounter increasingly in today's work and private world, we would call a complex problem. When moving from an initial state to a goal state, we talk about complex problems whenever there are four characteristic futures in the situation. The first of these four characteristic futures is interconnectedness. That means that in the problem situation there are many different elements and these elements are somehow interconnected and related to each other. So when you change one, something else in the problem situation might change as well. The second is intransparency. And intransparency means that not all information is available at the outset. But there might be some important hidden information and you as the problem solver, you need to go ahead and apply a good strategy to find out all the, all the information that is relevant. The third is dynamics. Dynamics means that the situation is not static, so it can change by itself and sometimes it might do so very quickly. So you as a problem solver better take that into account and keep in mind that the problem situation might be a very different one a day later than it was the day before. The fourth and last characteristic future is polytely. Polytely means that there are different goals that you have when you want to solve the problem situation. There's not only one goal, but there are at least two, maybe sometimes even five, ten or twenty. And most importantly, it will not be possible to reach all goals at the same time. 
So you need to find a good balance between the different goals. And you might want to say, okay, this goal might not be so important, but to solve the overall problem, that other goal is the most relevant. Whenever these four characteristic features come into one situation, then we talk about complex problems. And when you want to go ahead and solve these complex problems, so that is what we call complex problem solving, there are two dimensions, two cognitive processes that are most crucial that people need to have to be successful in solving complex problems. The first is what we call model building. That means you need to gather and gain some knowledge about the problem situation and you need to kind of, well, implement a mental representation of how the problem is structured and how the problem situation works. We call this model building or knowledge acquisition. The second cognitive process is what we call knowledge application. In the knowledge application situation, you already have somehow a representation of how the problem is structured and now you need to use this knowledge, you need to apply it in order to reach the goal state. So we have two cognitive processes of crucial importance, knowledge acquisition and knowledge application. What does it take to be a good problem solver? Are you just born as a good problem solver? Or can you acquire problem solving skills over your lifetime? Probably you can. Of course, the ability to solve complex problems depends, maybe to some extent, on other cognitive abilities, such as working memory or intelligence. But much more importantly, there are a number of research studies that have shown that complex problem solving is quite different from intelligence or working memory. And the main difference is probably that the type of strategies you need to use when solving complex problems and to understand when to use which strategy is something that can be learned. And it can be learned at school, it can be learned at work. Those are more formal learning settings, but there are also a number of informal learning settings where you can learn or where you can improve your complex problem solving ability. And the research studies that show this also show, as I mentioned before, knowledge acquisition and knowledge application, building a model and then using this model to work towards a solution. Those are the two most important cognitive processes and these processes can be facilitated and fostered. The German researcher Dietrich Dörner has worked a lot on, well, let's say, typical mistakes people do when they try to solve complex problems. And I now give you some examples of the most important ones. The first is insufficient goal elaboration. Do you, when you face a complex problem, actually take a close look at what you want to achieve? Is this clearly defined? And is it realistic? For instance, you might have experienced this by yourself at the workplace. Is the new timeline for the new project, is it realistic? Or is it overambitious and will definitely fail? A second typical pitfall is the repair shop principle. This is that you basically just react towards unwanted developments in the problem situation, but you never really take action as the problem solver. You're just reacting and trying to fix short-term problems. You could probably think of many examples from politics that were kind of work along the repair shop principle, with usually not very good outcomes at the very end on the long term. A third possible pitfall is well, that you fail to acknowledge long-term and side effects. For instance, in medical treatment, side effects and long-term effects of medication are a huge complex problem. A fourth potential pitfall is that there takes that uh, detection of wrong hypothesis and self-reflection does not sufficiently take place. This means that once you've chosen a path, you kind of fail to check whether this is the right path. Or put differently, you have a mental model and you feel this is correct. And even though there might be evidence from the problem situation that this is not correct, you don't keep on monitoring yourself and considering that maybe your mental representation is wrong. To avoid the many pitfalls that you could encounter when solving complex problems, 
you need to have a good strategy. So you need to have a good strategy to be a successful problem solver. And it is very difficult sometimes to decide which is the right strategy for a specific problem at hand. So for instance, strategy A might be good for problem 1, but not for problem 2. And it might just be the other way around for problem B. So to have a set of strategies available, and to know when to use which strategy is at the very heart of complex problem solving. Let me give you an example of one strategy that is good in quite a few problem situations. This is the so-called VOTAT strategy. VOTAT stands for very one thing at a time. And it means that often it makes sense to change only one element in the problem situation and then see what happens. Just think of that you react allergic suddenly to some type of food you've eaten, but you don't know which kind of food it is. So what you could do is you just change the entire way you eat and then the allergy might go away. But then you don't really know which was the specific food that caused the allergy. Votat would be to change every week one type of food you ate. And this will actually allow you to find out what caused the specific allergic effect. That's one example that's helpful for many complex problems, but for many it doesn't work either. So you need to have a large amount of strategies available. It's vital to have a good one to be a good problem solver. If you want to read more about this and the other aspects, I would also like to refer you to our material section. We face much more complex problems in our daily lives, at work or at home, than people did just 20, 30 or 40 years ago. And all of us are in one way or the other faced with a challenge to solve complex problems. And maybe during this video you've also discovered that you're faced with a lot of complex problems and that you are also faced with a challenge to solve them. When doing so, remember the two most important cognitive processes, knowledge acquisition, building a mental representation, and knowledge application, which is applying and using this knowledge. I hope this video has sparked your interest in the topic of complex problem solving, and thank you very much for watching this video.